Hey everyone, Creme here, and today I have Ronnie Arguerta on with us. How is that that pronunciation of the last name? You got it, bro. You got uh, it. Let's go. <laughs> Ronnie, how's it going, man? It's going well. How you doing, Kareem? Good, good. I just want to thank you for joining us today. It's, it's awesome to have you on. I uh, appreciate you having me on, man. Thanks a lot. For sure. So this is the first time we're meeting. We're meeting over Zoom. Um, we don't know too much about each other, but can you share, you know, how you got involved in the beautiful game so we could learn more? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so um, I started experimenting with the ball when I was five years old. Um, and just like that, that moment, the like first time I, the ball touched my foot, like I just, I couldn't stop. Um, and so that was that at, age of eight to three years later, I started playing a little bit like more, more organized on a team. Um, so that's, that was pretty much like the, the initial, you know, and then from there, it's just like, I, I couldn't stop playing. Um, I would play anywhere out on the street with my neighbors, uh, in school and school teams with, with my friends, my, my peers, my colleagues. Um, and yeah, that progressed. Um, so growing up, I, I played, it was, it's kind of like, it's like Sunday league for, for youth, you know, it wasn't like, it wasn't big clubs. Um, so where I grew up, I grew up in, uh, in Orange County, uh, specifically Costa Mesa, California. Um, two big clubs there were Pateadores and Irvine Strikers, um, and I had I had a couple friends. So one of them played for Pateadores, and the other one played for the Irvine Strikers. Um, and I I did get to experience like the whole club and, and, and that. And um, one of my one of my friends, the one who played for Pats, took me out to one of his trainings. And yeah, it was definitely definitely a different level. I was I was not I was not to that level. Um, but it was it was a good experience. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of like the the initial phase. How, how I got started with the beautiful game. Absolutely. And you mentioned Orange, Orange County. Um, I've never been there personally, but can you, um, you know, just paint a picture for us of like what it was like growing up there? Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so good weather year round. We probably get like a week max of, of rain uh, in the spring. Uh, but other than that, man, it's, it's great weather, sunny. Um, and uh, I live like about 15 minute drive from the from the beach from the ocean. Um, so Costa Mesa borders Newport Beach, Huntington Beach. Um, so yeah, like after school with my friends, we'd ride our bikes down to the down to the beach. We'd take a football with us and, and kick the ball around. Uh, you know, play on the sand, get a good workout, and then we'd hop in the ocean, cool off. Um, and then we'd go eat somewhere, man, um, in and out with some burgers or, um, there's a lot of good Mexican food out there. Uh, so it was, it was a blessing growing up in Orange County. Nice. So yeah, yeah. Playing beach soccer is always a vibe and, and then obviously grabbing, grabbing a bite is nice. Um, yeah. so what, Ronnie, what was the last team that you played on, right? Amateur or if it was college university. What was the last team that you played on before you signed your first professional contract? Uh, last team I played on was uh, the Ventura County Fusion. Um, it used to be, the league used to be PDL, hmm. uh, USL. It was under the USL, but it was like Premier Developmental League used to be called. Now it's USL League 2, I believe. Um, yeah, I played on I played on that team for three weeks. Um, this was in July 2014, and then later that year, in October 2014, they hosted a combine, um, which they host really good combines, by the way. Um, and that's where I got picked up to come play for the Switchbacks 
in their inaugural year, which was uh, 2015. So Switchbacks called you up and they said they wanted you. Was it who who contacted you? Was it Scout that um the coach? Um uh it was it was the head coach. His name is Steve Trichu. Um he's the one that you know he I mean he was there scouting players uh, again because it was a brand new team. So you know he was he was doing he was doing the the behind the scenes work. But um yeah, he's he's the one that, you know, opened that door and gave me that that opportunity to to play and and uh to play in the pro ranks. So forever forever grateful for him. Yeah, shout out to him. That's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. so you went from USL two playing only three weeks, which is incredible, and then you got picked up to from um by switchbacks, which is USL championship. Um yeah. the, uh division two under the US soccer pyramid under the MLS. Right. Um, right. which is a very high level. So how did it feel, right? You're playing US, yeah. USL two for three weeks, only yeah. three weeks, and then, you're, and then you're getting signed to a USL championship. How did you feel about it? Uh, man, it was, it was, uh, it was like, it was, un I couldn't believe it, to be honest with you. I, um, when he, when he emailed me the, the, the contract, like I, I just, I, it was surreal. I couldn't believe it, man. To be honest, I thought it was a dream, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, it's like I went from you know playing rec amateur to three weeks in the in uh, the developmental league into the pro rank. So uh, just another blessing, man, in, in life, you know. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. you're a quality player. Where do you play? What position? Uh, I play as a six, and I can play as an eight as well. Nice. So yeah. what, what were the biggest um, differences when you made the jump from USL 2 to USL um, Championship? Um, you know, great question. I mean, you, you play with and against, you know, more experienced players. And, and with that brings um brings more more like detail i want to say more detail to the game mm -hmm. um and also i think that the big the biggest thing would be uh the mindset the mentality um of, of a professional player mm, mentality 100 yeah. percent. can you oh sorry yeah no no worries go ahead oh, okay um what are, what are three tips that you can share with the viewers that play your position in six or the eight um, that have helped you a lot? What, what tips can you share with them? Yeah. Oh, man. Three tips. Man, you're making it tough. <laughs> um, uh, just like in, in general or, or like on the field, like about the game? You know what? I have a better question. What okay. advice would you give back to yourself what are yeah. three things that you would say, hey, like, these are the three things you need to do, Ronnie, like, in order for you to go pro? <laughs> uh, that's a great question, man. Um, I would, I would, I would study a lot. I would, hmm. I would pick, you know, I would pick a player, for example, Busquets. Like, he, I, I admire him a lot because uh he's he's not like the biggest guy the strongest guy the fastest guy um but just his intelligence man like the timing of his of his movement into spaces uh to receive the ball how he receives the ball the body of the the, the angle of his body he's side on if he has you know time, uh, if he has space to turn um He's just so good on the ball, but um, that I mean that's that's one of many, right? In 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 the high level, high le at the guys playing at the highest level, um. But yeah, study, study, uh, watch other players, see what they do, see what they do, not only with the ball, but what are they doing off the ball, um, because a lot of the like a lot of the, I, I don't know, I saw I read about like this stat that says that as a player like in the 90 minutes or, or however long you know because they could go more than 90 minutes if it's you know a playoff game or whatever but 
like we only we only touched the ball like a, in total of a minute and a half to two minutes max. We're, we're on the ball, you know, out of the 90 minutes. So a lot of the game is played. We're playing it off the ball, mm. off the ball. So it's like, OK, so, um, you know, when you're when you're studying yourself or, or when you're studying these these um, big players is like, well, watch them when they're off the ball, not only when when they have when they have possession of the ball. Nice, that's a great point. Can you share yeah. two more things with us? Yeah, of course. Um, I'd uh, I'd tell younger Ronnie to, um, and, and again, this comes with with time, but obviously, if if I you know if I could have known this sooner, it'd be it'd be that'd be good um to uh, be able to like navigate change because and like ambiguity because you know there's like change like we're always evolving man you know times are changing things are changing people are changing growing um football itself you know is 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 growing with the whole advancement in technologies um and so yeah just, just be able to uh, navigate and 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 deal with deal with change um so that would be one tip and then <sighs> third tip i'd say learn to problem solve quickly uh because the game that's the game like it, it's at a tactical point you got to be able to problem solve in the moment uh, the game is, is so is so dynamic things are constantly changing players moving spaces closing opening up so you got to be able to problem solve fast quickly. great tips yeah. yeah great tips yeah what things changed for you um once you signed your first pro contract? Uh what changed for me? Um can you be a little bit more specific for that question? Absolutely. You know, like I've heard players say, you know, people started to treat me differently in a good or bad way. Um, you know, mm -hmm. certain things you you're having a change of status, right? Full okay. fight professional player so there's certain things or dynamics that change in a person's life when it when there's yeah. a, a level up in status of course yeah yeah for sure um yeah i don't, I don't think that you know the whole like status thing or anything like that uh changed for me in any way but I, i'd say internally and like for myself it was like It was like you you really can like accomplish you know your your goals and and your dreams if you really um like put your mind to it you know focus and and really prioritize um the things you believe you have to do to to get there and so i think I think it was more of like a like an internal um it brought i mean it brought a lot of happiness to me a lot of joy um and, and and just the realization that like yeah you know you, you can make things happen absolutely yeah what sacrifices have you and your family made for football oh man so huge uh one. yeah yeah, yeah <laughs> big one so the question was what sacrifices have i personally made and family absolutely well? yeah so um in terms of like in terms of family it's just a, a lot of time away from family um you know you miss birthdays you miss weddings you miss um just that quality time you know with with uh with your brother with your mom with your dad sister whatever it may be um a lot of time away from them and and as i'm getting uh as I'm getting like, you know, more and more into my career, 
um i started to think about all that it's like it's like man cuz you know you, we never know when when our day comes you know only god knows but you think about that like like oh, okay yeah like i'm living out my dream but it's like i am spending a lot of time away from my family members you know and so that i think that's that's the that's like the main sacrifice um between myself and my family and then individually man it's a lot you know you put you put your mind you put your body through a lot um especially you know the longer your career is like the more you 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 clock in those miles you clock in those reps um and what else uh a lot of money uh, a lot of money that you sacrifice that you that you I don't want to say sacrifice but you invest in yourself um you know to to continue to grow and improve and and carry out your career um hmm. those are those are the main ones I can think of right now the top of my head yeah and you obviously have to be strong minded to be able to do this right you're away from family how do you deal with it mentally um me- mentally how do i deal with that mentally is okay question um i, th- I think what what helps is like you know giving them giving them a call you know we're 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 in an era again where technology is so advanced that like we're able to do this you know again it's not uh we're not in person you know we're not able to to share that dynamic but i mean i can see you you know and and so just giving them a, a facetime call a video call um shooting them a text um Yeah, that's that's it. Give them a give them a call here in their voice. Yeah. Let's yeah. dive in more into the game, right? Um yeah, let's do it. You know, you're playing at in arenas and stadiums on the yeah. big stage in front of yeah. thousands and thousands and thousands of fans. How how do you deal with that? Um I think I think the the one thing that's helped me with that is always reminding myself that um and as cliche as it sounds it's like I ask myself what can I control right so I can control myself and I can learn to control myself and I can always do that a lot better you know we can always improve with that as well mm-hmm. but uh I can control myself you know my actions um i can if i'm on the ball i can control the ball you know i can i can um uh, so you you almost like learn to tune that out you know through through focusing on the controllables right so it's like okay i'm 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 here to you know at, at at this level it's like we have to it's it's all about winning right mm-hmm. it's all about winning um so you and and it goes and again it goes to like just being in the moment that's another thing just being in the moment like as as much as as much as we we study the opponent um you know to figure out their strengths their weaknesses it's like you can't you, you can't get too ahead of yourself it's like cuz cuz i i mean i've been there right where it's like i i know i'm starting it's like shit okay what do i got to do like all right you know if the ball is there then i'll move here um you know if we're here then i if i receive the ball then i got to play it there it's like i'm thinking like all this stuff right like so much is running through my head but it's like 
all right, Ronnie, like, get out of your head. Like, the referee hasn't even blown the whistle yet. But, you know, so it's like, it's just, it's that reminding myself, again, focus on the controllables and then just be in the moment. So, Thanks. Yeah. So, you know, we play soccer because we love it so much, right? It's a yeah. fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. But this is, a, this is not something fun anymore. It's a job. Yeah. Did you notice any changes when it became a job? Were there things oh, that yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you didn't like and things that you liked about it? Yeah, no, no. There's, I mean, there's been times where <laughs> I wake up, you know, and I'm like, damn. All right, here we go, you know. Um, but, yeah, it, it's like you – and and it changes, man. Like, it changes. Like, <clears throat> you know, you're going to have a coach that loves you. You're going to have a coach that just – no matter what you do at training, no matter what you do with your opportunities, when they're given to you in a game, he's just not going to – he's not going to feel you, right? So, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's all, it, it's always, again, it, we, we, I talked about it earlier. It's like navigating, learning how to navigate through and being tolerant to, to change um, mm -hmm. because we just never know, you know, what, what, what. Each game will play out. Each season will play out like so. Um, I always, I always try to remind myself that too. It's like, well, well, I play the game. Well, I started playing the game because at five years old, when I started messing with that football, I just couldn't stop. I, I was like, I fell in love with it. Right, and so. I, 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 I remind myself about those experiences as, as a kid, you know, to bring that back in, to, to, to feel that again, you know? Nice. You know, away from the field, the field's the number one place to be at, but the second place to me, I'm not too sure for you, is the change room, the second best place to be in. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so a lot of things happen in the changing room. There's a lot of banter, <laughs> yeah, a lot yeah, of excitement, yeah. partying, so on and so forth before and after the game, of course, after you guys went. Yeah. How instrumental or how important has the change room been for you? Man, it's um it's probably one of the only times that you get with your teammates off the field. Mm. Like yeah, like on the field, like it's business, right? Like it's like no friends, almost. You know, like no matter if if you're my teammate, like you know, if, if you're not doing what you got to do, I'm gonna tell you, and 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 I hope you don't take that in in a bad way, right? But uh, yeah, once we once we cross the line, it's like it's business, you know. Once we get off the field, and it's like all right, we're buddies again. But yeah, going back to your question like yeah the locker room's probably one of the the, the the only places in the in the times that you get to to just you know enjoy your teammates and, and get it get to know them a little better you know aside from from just the football side of it sure yeah let's let's dive into a little bit about where this is the first time i'm asking this, this is my second last question ronnie you know yeah. playing on the field in practice, your team, your teammates, your teammates, but they, it's also war. Somebody's trying to eat your food. They're trying to take your position, mm. right? Mm. What, what's going like? You know, I'll share something really quickly. I played semi-pro in NPSL and for Naples United FC, and yeah. first time it came out of my mind because that's like the highest level. I, uh, one of the the second highest level I played at. In my yeah. mind, I'm like, yo, this guy's playing in my position. Like, I gotta do like I gotta do something, right? So it's kind of yeah. like war. Yeah, 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 for sure. So how do you go about, you know, training practices to make sure you get that, you're on that starting line? Like, how do you go about those things, you know, men mentally-wise and just playing-wise? Yeah. 
Um, oh, man, that's a good question. <laughs> I, uh, good word question. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, what helps me is just focusing on myself as like selfish as that may sound or as greedy as that may sound like I gotta I gotta focus on myself because I've noticed that like you know when when I'm looking at whatever the other dude in front of me behind me is doing then I'm I'm not focused on what I have to do Mm. right so just focusing on 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 yourself you know knowing learning uh, your expectations, your role, your responsibilities, and and executing to the best of your ability, and um, reflecting too, like after training, uh, like okay, you know, how was my warm up during the the passing patterns that we did? Was I was I off? Did I do well? Did I complete my passes? Um. After that, we progressed into the session. How, how how did I do there, right? And then you just reflect and you 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 you, you analyze, you know, what you did well, what you didn't do well. So that that, that ties back into continuing to learn and grow, um, which we should always strive for. Um, but yeah, just focus on yourself. And um, what else? Uh, kind of kind of like what helps me too is like you know re- removing myself from that picture right so like looking at the bigger picture mm-hmm. and just remembering that it's it's just a game right yeah it's just a game yeah. although 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 yeah uh, uh, I'm getting paid for it yeah you know at, at this level it's like business we only care about wins but you know you take yourself you remove yourself from that environment and you like it's just the game right like that's it, that's it. um yeah just focus on myself and, and tell myself just to to enjoy it and have fun yeah. last one what's your you know your most memorable soccer moment what's the first thing that comes to your mind when i ask you that a few a few came up um so while playing with the fusion um it was actually my first game for them. It was an exhibition game. Um, we played against Glasgow Rangers, uh, Premier League team in Scotland. Um, and they were out in, in California doing like preseason, playing friendlies and stuff, you know, preparing for their season. Uh, but I, I came on towards the end of the game, like around the 70th minute. And I wasn't I wasn't even supposed to like dress for the for this game. It was like my second day <laughs> with the team. So I trained on a Monday. We played Glasgow Rangers on a Tuesday. Um and co- uh coach Rudy Ibarra was like, Hey, you know, we're playing tomorrow, it's an exhibition match. He's like, You can come out, you can dress out, but I don't guarantee any playing time. So that was that. But uh minute seventy in the game. I he, he tells me to warm up. I think it was a like minute sixty five. I come on minutes around minute seventy. Uh I was playing striker at the time. And I ended up scoring against Glasgow Rangers, but that was like that was like the moment that like it just it just gave me a, a lot of confidence um and um like belief that yeah, I, I can play against, you know, professionals. I can and play with professional so that was a big moment big switch right there went off oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. big big just sparked you know something was a spark it's crazy no yeah, it's great that it happened though it's good yeah yeah it was good so i mean if you don't mind me asking how old are you right now 
I'm 30, about to turn 31 in oh, January. And you look young as hell, man. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Lee. That. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, so, so take, taking care of the of yourself helps, you know, a little bit. For sure. <laughs> so you have like five, ten more years left if you want. Whoa. Yeah, I, I hope so, you know. As long as the um the opportunities keep coming, you know. Um God's plan, uh, God's will. So do you have any any plans um have you done any planning now of afterwards or any thinking about that um uh once my playing days are done yeah 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 i I thought about that multiple times um i'd like to stay within within football uh whether you know i coach become a scout become an agent um which one are you looking more towards too, though? Like, which one's been more attractive to you, or you think that you would get it? Right, right now, the coaching side of the game has been has been the most attractive. Um, yeah, it'd be the coaching side of the game. Got it. All right. Yeah. So we're we're in the the last ten questions. It's the fun ten questions. Awesome. Um, I have like the first five are like speed questions. You gotta like answer them quick. Okay. All right. So the first one is um who's your favorite team? Real Madrid. Favorite player? Tiago Alcantara. Favorite cleats? Mizunos. Favorite food? <laughs> Mexican food. Mexican food. Um what what dish though? Like tacos, tomatoes. Carne asada. Okay, nice. Um, and last one, favorite artist? Ooh, Osuna. Got it. Like own. Um, last five. Who's uh, who's better, Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Um, the, you know we're about to play. Let's. Do you play FIFA? Uh, no, not often. Uh, like once, once in a blue moon. All right, let's just say me and you were going to play FIFA. We got $1,000 on the line, just for yeah. example. Who, who's, your, who's your team you're choosing? Man City. Man City, okay, nice, yeah. yeah. Why, Aguero or? Uh, well, Aguero doesn't play there anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, Why Man City? Dude, they're all really good. <laughs> yeah, true. Other players are good. <laughs> um, two goals in a game or one goal, one assist? One goal and assist. Would you rather score a free kick or a PK in the last minute? Free kick. And if you were a coach and you were able to sub in any player in history, any player, um, who would it be? Ronaldo El Fenomeno, Brazilian. Brazilian, nice. Yeah, yeah they're skillful. Well, yeah. um, you know, before we go, Ronnie, where can the viewers find you? Uh, yeah, um, I'm on Instagram. Uh, username is Ronnie, R-O-N-Y, Argueta, A-R-G-U-E-T-A, underscore. I'm on Twitter, same username. Uh, you can email me, uh, Ronnie, R-O-N-Y, A-18, at yahoo.com. Um, you can shoot me a text if you want, 714-600-0666. Got it. Well, Ronnie, I just want to thank you for taking the time for joining us on One Soccer Nation podcast today. Thank you, Kareem. Appreciate it, man. Likewise.